about what I would call on-site optimization and keyword density. Okay. So like you were asking about, you know, <clears throat> yeah, sometimes we dismiss keyword density on a page, but but you still have to have the keyword on the page. Yeah, and kind of the question is like, yeah, you have the keyword on the page and maybe one other place or a couple other places to almost make the article or the content um, to remind the user they're in the right place. So in other words, you'd have it a couple of times for user friendliness or user usefulness, not necessary, not necessarily needed for SEO, right? What, what I really like about what you just said is that sometimes web designers don't like words on pages because they think it is not pretty and they'll resist it. But oh, what, yeah. uh, you know, the, the, the Bible of web design don't make me think says yeah. is that you need to have words to reassure someone they are in the right place. That's very important. Yeah. But, you know, Google doesn't pick up drifts very well. It doesn't pick up inferences very well. And so you kind of do need to have the word on the page. Now, I would say Google is a lot better than it used to be. Um, it used to be an old SEO. Old SEO, we would build a page for lawyers, build a page for uh, attorneys, build a page for law firm. Well, Google is smart enough at this point to know that it's all the same. They're the same, yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> So we don't need to have three pages for every law practice or type of law they practice. We just need it. So in that sense, Google doesn't think of keywords. It thinks of topics now. Mm -hmm. And so if you follow the keyword research process, as, as I outline it, what you're going to do is you're going to have a topic with a whole bunch of keywords underneath it. And then you should apply that topic to a particular web page understanding that there are some keywords that a lot of people are searching for and you probably should include those on the page. And there are some words that people aren't include are taught searching for so much. And it might be worth mentioning that keyword on the same page as another keyword. But there are sometimes like if if a search is if a keyword has got like you know a thousand opportunity number, which is one of the numbers we use in our key research process, and one has 10. Well, that's a lot more people looking for the word with 1,000 than 10. But to make it more natural, you should include both, mm -hmm. right? And lean <clears throat> towards the 1,000. But, but to, to give you a keyword density percentage, what percent of the content should be that, that's where people go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right. That makes and sense. It, yeah. This is why when I give uh, writers directions on how to write pages, I say, here's the topic. And the topic is usually the number one keyword. Mm -hmm. But I don't tell them it's a keyword. I say, this is the topic. Mm -hmm. And they write a page. And I say, here are some other words you might want to include in there if you can fit it in there naturally. And so I let the writer just, just write. Mm -hmm. And they know, hey, you know, if I can use this variation, great. Yeah. But then I go back. What I'll do is I'll write a page, publish it, come back in three months. And I will go into in the on-page optimization process in Curious Sense. There's a it tells you how to go to Search Console and to check to see what queries the page is being served for. And if there is a query that it's being served for it, there are clicks for it, and it ranks really well according to Search Console for it, <clears throat> then I might tweak the page to for that different keyword because Google already likes the page for that keyword. But that's why I'll often... Um, go back three months later because you just get that data in search console to show you what google likes to serve this page for so would you then it seems like another reason to do that would be because 
while Google will pick up the keyword, it almost seems like you'd want to go on the offensive then and, and say, okay, let me make it explicit because somebody else could come in and make the keyword explicit and steal your search. What do you uh, think? Yeah, there's always that. Yeah, I think that's true. You know, but they will never have my Google Search Console data to know what Google is serving this page for. Right. So I have access and I know what Google, what, what specific phrases Google <clears throat> likes to send traffic to that page for. Okay, yeah. And they, they might have a page and it, it's hopefully not a copy of mine. And they might find other variations that do well for them. Great, optimize it for that. And if you're not hyper-focused on only one word and you're using variations, what you'll find is there's a lot of words that Google will serve the page for. Some more frequently than others. Sometimes that's because more people search for this than that. Sometimes it's because Google will actually pick an irrelevant keyword and try to send traffic to it. Sometimes yeah. it's it's because Google tries something new. It's so funny. Like they'll just, they'll, they'll just test something out and say, I wonder if people will like it if I send them to this page. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. I imagine they're doing that a lot. They are. Yeah. They do that a ton. So um, <clears throat> that that's how I like to think about writing content in light of keywords rather than a keyword density percentage. Yeah. I'll let you know. um, now I might use keyword density just to almost make sure I'm not overdoing it. Okay, that's a really good point. So, so then you can use your um, your rank math or your Yoast or whatever to use that as a guideline to say, well, I know they want me to get to a certain amount to make my color green or whatever. Right. But I'm going to ignore that and just make sure that it's not red, but it's yellow or something. Well, I, I always ignore that because the at least the free version of like Yoast, for instance, will only let you pick one word. Yes. But I'm not optimizing a page for one word. I'm optimizing yeah. for a topic and that topic has many words. That's true too. That's true. And so that's why I kind of <clears throat> don't even enter the keyword into the Yoast box to tell Yoast what I'm optimizing it for. Yeah. There could be within the way Yoast works as, a, as an SEO plugin, benefit in just making sure you're not also optimizing for the same page somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Too. Right, that's a problem that's called can, uh, cannibalization. And yeah. that Yoast can help make sure you don't like, but but even if you if you used Yoast wrong, you, you might have two pages with two uh, different keywords, but they're too similar. And yeah. really, that second yeah. keyword should be optimized for the first page, not separate. And that's kind of a cannibalization thing, which you can use Search Console to check for, too. Yeah, for a client, you know, they've already, um, you know, they were ranking really well on a page for just like a bunch of different keywords. And some of those keywords were higher amount of searches they weren't ranking as well for. Um, but, you know, we created a few extra pages for some of those, for some additional, not necessarily just for the keywords, but to answer questions that people were searching for. Right. And, um, and you know, and I was thinking, well, are we going to cannibalize based upon, you know, this 750 word thing? But then I'm thinking, well, no, we want to, we need to make sure we just answer the question properly. <laughs> If we have some of these other keywords in there, oh, that's that's okay. We want to make sure that we're helpful in answering the right question. And we can't avoid using some words from a highly ranked page right. to make the article make sense. Exactly. And, I'm and that's assuming, key. Make it make sense. Not, yeah, and, then, yeah. and at this point, you know, Google is smart enough to know what you're doing. Right. Yeah. But but there are there are things if I find that Google is sending one keyword to two different pages, that tells me in Search Console that I'm cannibalizing myself. Yeah. Right. Because in, in Search Console under the pages, you can say 
Okay, oh, you look at a page and then you can click on that and you say, show me the queries that show up for this page, all right? Then you can select one of them and you can do the opposite and say, for this query, what pages does Google serve? And I need to make a decision to decide, well, okay, is this a salesy word mm. or an informational word? If it's a salesy <laughs> word, I wanna make sure it's going to the sales page, right? I wanna go to the page where you can buy it or, or make the lead or close the deal or whatever it might be. But if it's an informational, I'm fine with a, a blog post having it. Mm. So if that's the case, then I might go into, let's say there's one keyword, and it's a salesy keyword, buy widgets today. Oh, I want that to go to my widget page, right? But let's say I have a sales widget page that shows up for that keyword sometimes. I also have a blog post about why you should buy widgets today. That shows up for the same word. Yeah. Well, I don't really want the blog post ranking for that. I'd rather the bot, the, you know, because in this case, it's like someone wants to buy. I don't want them to have to take a step. So what I do is I make sure the blog post had not only a link to the sales page, but the link included the keywords for which I wanted the sales page to rank. Okay. Because anchor text matters for SEO, even if they're internal links on your own website. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So that sends a signal to Google that the blog post says the sales page is more relevant for buy widgets today. And it sends signals and that potentially could break that cannibalization cycle.